Hello and welcome to the Imaging Wire show. My name is Brian Casey. I'm managing editor of the Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our guest is Kate Kovalenko. She is chief product officer at Serona Medical. Kate, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So Kate, you've been in healthcare for over 20 years. Uh, 15 of those years have been in radiology technology. Can you tell us about what drew you to the field and, and, and what keeps you passionate about it? Sure. Actually, getting into this field was completely accidental. I studied uh, both music and computer engineering in undergrad and uh, was looking for a job desperately. Personal reasons, I had moved to Southwest Virginia and found a startup called Provox, and it was working on speech recognition and radiology. And I was like, well, this is sound and technology. Let's give this a shot. So I became employee number 12, I believe, at the startup and really just fell in love with the industry and what you could do for patient care and for clinicians through technology. So awesome. no one no one in my family is part of healthcare, but if I had my life to do over, I think I'd have been a clinician. Yeah. Uh, so, so before Serona, you led strategy and product management at Nuance's PowerScribe Reporting and, and the Precision Imaging Network there. How did those experiences shape your perspective on what radiologists really need? Yeah. Well, it's interesting what they really need to be in the question, because actually when you introduced speech recognition to radiology 20 something years ago, you were replacing transcription and you were actually making the radiologist's life so much harder. You actually took their clinical assistant away, gave them technology, and they became document editors more than anything else, at least in their perspective and, and certainly from a workflow perspective. So for years, you know, we were focusing on how do we improve the quality of the ordering clinician and the patient, right? First with turnaround time improvement, with the structured uh, reporting and standardized reporting, and all of that, again, being about more than the radiologist, but about who they're serving. And then even with the advent of diagnostic AI, I thought, okay, here's an opportunity for look, us to look at what can you know, pixel-based AI be doing to help radiologists. But those tools as well, we're focusing on you know, really amazing quantification of neural disease and lung disease and things, again, outside the scope of what radiologists would normally be doing. So more work for them, more challenge for them. So I think we're really just now on the precipice of using technology to go back to deliver good things for radiologists rather than having them be like the hardworking conduit to all the great value they're bringing to the to the patients and clinicians. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's a super ex exciting time to be watching. Um, so at, at what point, you, you mentioned speech recognition that's been around for a while and PAX has been around for a while. At what point did you realize that the existing systems that we have in radiology are too fragmented. You know, we've got, uh, you know, image viewing here and we've got uh, reporting over here and uh, maybe workflow and AI over here. When did you realize that we really needed, what, 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 radio, what radiology really needs is just a from scratch rebuild? Yeah, I don't know that there was a single moment in time. I think that's like five to 10 years of just gradual built up frustration. <laughs> of not being able to create workflows that make a lot of sense. You know, I think we did tremendous things in at Nuance and with PowerScribe and trying to get reporting as far you know, as we could with just the tools that it was capable of doing. But just simple workflows, like being able to auto-populate comparison data, like dates are very hard to dictate, they're hard to edit. You know, those types of workflows required two companies to work together. And even when we had working prototypes and standard based ways of using like Firecast, for example, to translate that data, two big, large organizations, like we basically, as far as I know, that's still on the shelf because there was no ability to agree on the commercialization strategy, the like support strategy, things like that. So just the basic workflows that you want to bring to this market were impossible when you're trying to have these large, large organizations work together. Mm. So it's really exciting to come here and like really own the full end-to-end -end workflow. Oh, for sure. Now we, we talked to, to Ken Kaufman, um, the uh, Serona's leader um, a few weeks ago, and, and he talked about how at Serona, the decision was made to just kind of rebuild everything from the ground up. Can you talk about the decision behind that and what sort of risks and opportunities were involved in that? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, many companies have tried to create a unified solution by like through uh, acquisition, right? You have 
kind of two different technologies that are trying to coexist. And we've seen other kind of unified solutions be less successful because they are still kind of bolting together these multiple applications. And for the most part, none of those applications that they're buying and bolting together were, were cloud native. So being able to start over and really think about the architecture from beginning to end and re-architect a completely unified solution in the cloud allows us to deliver innovation more quickly and surprisingly more effectively. So for a person like me who's been in the industry a long time with you know potentially concerns over what is performance in the cloud going to be like for breast imaging and things like that, you know, I have been I have been very thankfully <laughs> proven wrong in all of my doubts as well. So would you say that was one of the biggest risks involved in in, the, in this decision is you know how is the system going to perform in yeah. the cloud or were there other things that that you kind of were worried about a little bit? Well, I mean, being a product person, there's lots of things you worry about. <laughs> and I think for me, you know, thinking about the cloud as as someone who's been in this industry and been been like part of the legacy uh, evolution, even thinking cloud, also thinking unified solutions. Like I lived through, you know, the deconstruction of PACs and here we are in the reconstruction of PACs, right? So there were, there were many challenges that people smarter than me were able to like firmly say that we could do this, right? You have some of the leading experts in how to create cloud native technology here. And so I, I, I trusted them. I don't know that that was a risk. I think the bigger risk from a product perspective is figuring out how you take multiple systems, all of which have had skilled and focused attention for 20 years and recreate those workflows from scratch while maintaining some level of like, this is how I'm used to operating as a user. This is how I'm used to deploying this technology as a as an, like an IT person. And so replacing legacy technology that has tens and 20 years of, of buttons and functions and, and trust is to me what's the biggest risk. Right. Now you're chief product officer there at Serona. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your responsibilities and how you align the, you know, the engineering, the clinical, the design teams and get everybody kind of, you know, pull in the same direction? Yeah, well, that's, I mean, that's always the hardest thing, right? And in, in any company and certainly in a startup and having focus is, is the most critical thing. Um, and for me, it might actually be a little bit simpler because actually part of my scope includes services. And so as one unit, we can actually see what are the challenges that are blocking people's ability to go live? What are common service requests that we can tackle? What are areas of our application that have been difficult to train that perhaps we could look at you know, UI improvements and things like that? So we're really able as a whole team from product to engineering to our services organization to focus on the clinical outcomes and focus on our client satisfaction. Mm -hmm. And so of course there's, you know, there's, there's goal setting, there's KPIs, there's ways we measure that, but keeping yeah. the client first and foremost is really how we'll be successful. Yeah. Now, Serona's solution does include a reporting component and radiology reports are, you know, they're so important. It's basically the radiologist final product to the reporting, or the referring physician. And these reports have to be accurate and reliable. So how did Serona approach the the challenge of developing a, a clinical grade reporting solution? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. I've often described reporting as like an iceberg. Like the part you can see is just the very tip, you know? So like if you're looking at it and you're a lay person or even a radiologist, like all the massive amount of manipulation that you're doing with the images and and those workflows look so complex and they are some complex. And you look at a reporter and in many ways, you're like, you've got some structured reporting, you've got some speech to text, but it's basically word, right? And, yeah. and some additional things that you can add on. But the reality is that this is the solution that ties radiology back into the healthcare network. And so every decision you're making impacts the way that that communication happens. So things as little as like, we need to be able to associate two procedure codes so you can dictate the one report. Well, what do you do with the merge fields then? And what does HL7 outbound look like? And how do you make the right controls over to make sure that like the date ranges are appropriate so that you can link those or the body parts are appropriate so that you're not linking two totally different things and, and sending you know the wrong information to the downstream system. So every small piece of what a radiologist sees has outsized impact on like actually what the IT community then is managing. So so yeah, when you're when you're creating solutions, you have to think about more than just what does this button look like on the screen and how is that actually impacting care. 
Mm, oh, for sure. Now, Sarona, you've used the term pixel to reporting. Can you talk about what that means in terms of a radiologist day-to-day -day workflow and, and, and how is it different from what they've used before? Well, I can tell you what I hope it means, right? Because I think we're in a time of evolution right now. And you had asked earlier, you know, when did I know this had to be recreated from scratch or rebuilt from scratch? And I think honestly, when I was looking at, at my solution as an individual, like just creating a reporter, the more I thought about what that future looked like, the more that reporter just disappeared, right? You can imagine a world now with agentic AI and LLMs and conversational, um, you know, interaction with with computers and you can talk to your watch and your refrigerator, like it was only, it was only inevitable, it seemed, right? That, that you would be able to look at the images, interact with the images, ask questions of the images, ask for assistance on looking something up in the clinical record, and that all of that could be done with technology. And the thought of like tabbing through a structured template, like it just doesn't seem logical anymore. So as speech becomes commoditized, advanced LLP becomes commoditized, reporting just kind of fades into part of what interacting with the pixels become. So specific examples would be like the one I said originally, just being able to take the comparison date and put that into the report without having to redictate. Being able to understand that you're in L1, L2 within your viewer so that you can put that information into the appropriate part in, in reporting. Like those are examples that we can do today that just start to illustrate like where this will go once you really truly can only focus on the pixels and have the report become the byproduct. Now we we talked earlier about legacy systems and and how you know some of these technologies have been around for a long time. Pax has been around for decades and uh, speech recognition not quite as long, but it's been around for a long time too. And AI is coming along, and AI is the big thing in radiology right now. But it's it's being bolted onto in a lot of cases it's being bolted onto legacy pack systems. So, how is Serona embedding AI differently? And I, I understand that you've been, uh, you know, developing features like focus mode, auto impressions, prior sum summarization, and things like that. Yeah, I think there's a couple ways to look at this from just a pure reporting standpoint. Um, you know, some of the challenges we had when I was part of the legacy vendor was you had a capital purchase and then you had to look for ways to find additional value for your clients. Um, and so as AI and like clinical tools for looking at error checking and so forth, those were supplemental subscriptions. So the actual workflow for those felt bolted on because they were bolted on so that we could turn things on and off. Right. And with Serona, since we are a SaaS subscription product, like just as you would expect that you have more movies and Netflix and music and Spotify, like you will have additional functionality that is seamless within Serona as part of your subscription to the service. So with that approach, we don't have to design things in a way that feel bolted on. And plus owning the full stack changes everything too, right? If you're going to create a patient summary, for example, um, doing that with just a reporter would be great. And you could look at that within the reporter, but since we also have the patient jacket as part of our unified solution, it just makes the most sense for, for the user's workflow to look there. So part of this is just simply a different perspective on how to release new innovation. And I think the other part that you mentioned about AI and how those are separate companies and built on products that, that you put into like the legacy packs, I think part of that is just you know, we are built completely on our own APIs. So we will be able to de deliver an SDK that allows people to make it feel embedded for us because we're starting from scratch. So even if there are third parties that are doing some of these very focused specific like clinical indications that won't be part of Serona's core competency, at least for a while, <laughs> you'll be able to interact with those like just like any other button on your screen um, because we can allow for that as a cloud-based kind of modern solution. Cool. Now, you've also got some features like quality assist, uh, real-time error correction that go beyond just a kind of a, a spell checker. How do you see these tools improving efficiency and, and also, you know, accuracy and consistency of radiology reports? Yeah. I mean, I think LLMs have just changed the game. I mean, it took, I forget, seven-ish years for, for a team of people who I truly respect in NLP to create something that within days now you can you can fine tune a model to, to produce. So things like quality checking, of course now is easy to evolve to look for out of context words, to look for potentially mismatch recommendations, all those kinds of things are capable. But even that tool alone is still just 
helping a radiologist be a document checker, which is what we did to them 20 years ago. Yeah. So I'm very excited for, for, for new technologies, especially in like the agentic AI space to really start to be that clinical assistant where you can go back to the days of like, use my CT of the chest template and do such and such and talk to the system like you talk to your transcriptionist or to be able to like query the cl clinical record and have that assistant like every other physician within the practice has. So that's what I'm looking forward to. I mean, I think there's many things we're doing along the way to bring quality and efficiency, but I think the future, which is near term is, is really, truly exciting. Cool, definitely. So, so Kate, RSNA, hard to believe, just a few weeks away. Uh, can you give us a sneak peek of what Serona is going to be talking about in Chicago? Well, we talked here about focus on the most important thing, and that is that is clinical grade software. So you will see production software being demonstrated at every location in our booth that's being used to treat now millions of patients over the year. And so that's what we'll be showing. I'm sure we'll have some things, some special things to, <laughs> to sneak in there too about what the future is, some of the topics I touch on today. But I think the most exciting thing is that this is real, it's live, it's in clinical practice. And uh, and yeah, so we're excited to show it to you. Awesome. Well, I can't wait to see it. Uh, we'll, would like to thank uh, Kate Kovalenko, uh, Chief Product Officer at Serona Medical for being with us today. Really enjoyed our discussion. Thanks so much for having me. You bet. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey.